Now, let us see the, the relation between light and photosynthesis. So, so far we have seen the required materials for the formation of glucose, carbon dioxide and water. So, in the earlier times, in the time of Priestley, Joseph Priestley, the scientists they were unable, they were not known about the energy involvement in the process of photosynthesis. But there they found that for the formation of materials like carbon dioxide and water, from the substances like the addition of oxygen to carbon to form carbon dioxide and addition of oxygen to hydrogen to form water molecule. So, in this process when these substances are formed energy is liberated. If you take combustion if you burn something while burning a material you find some carbon dioxide is released, some water vapor is released. If you burn a stick a match stick, carbon dioxide is released, water is released. At the same time what is released along with those two? Energy is released out. So, it was observed by those scientists energy is released during the formation of these two molecules by the combination by the combination reactions of oxygen with carbon and hydrogen. So, they got one more doubt that if this setup is reversed by using these two materials if some other substance is formed. So, in this case the energy is required. So, that is they found that for the formation of oxygen energy is required. Plants are able to produce oxygen they are producing oxygen. So, for the production of oxygen energy is required here. From where do the plants get this energy? How they meet this energy requirement? So, now let us see. So, an, a Dutch scientist, Ingenhouse, he found answer for this question like from where do the plants get energy with his simple experiment with a hydrilla plant. He found that plants get the energy from light that is the sunlight. So, sunlight is the source of energy for the plants. So, he conducted experiments with hydrilla plants. He observed that the hydrilla plants in presence of sunlight they carry out photosynthesis and they release oxygen. So, that is for the release of oxygen energy is required and he observed that the energy is supplied by the sun. So, this observation was done by Jan Ingenhouse in, nine, in 1779. So, later this whatever the points given by engine house that is the light is essential for the process of photosynthesis it was supported by Engelmann in the early 20th century. He conducted experiments with a strand of algae, a strand of algae he conducted several experiments the important or the part of light in the production in the photosynthesis. So, he exposed a strand of algae to different color lights and then he made oxygen sensitive bacteria, oxygen sensitive bacteria crowded on it, bacteria crowded on it. So, it is illuminated by different color lights and he observed that they are more crowded at uh, blue and red regions. So, he found that different color pigments they have different role and uh, they have different level of absorption of energy that is from the light. So, his experiments they have given some point that pigments, pigments are the special molecules that are responsible and that plays a major role in collection of energy that is the collection absorption of energy from the light. So, these pigments the green color pigments that we find in plants they play a major role in the process of photosynthesis which we are going to learn in the coming sessions. Ok, now uh, let us see an activity which help us to prove that light is necessary for photosynthesis. Now, let us see the activity. So, we need a beaker, we need a beaker with water and take some water in the beaker 
Now, take a funnel and some hydrilla plants on it. So we're going to uh, take a funnel, a glass funnel which is transparent. So the funnel is inverted upside down in the beaker with water. Now inside the funnel we have taken some hydrilla plants. So hydrilla is a thin water plant. So these water plants are taken inside the funnel. So now take one test tube with water. Now carefully invert this test tube over the funnel. So see that the test tube is inverted in this way. So why we have done like this? This is to see that the test tube do not contain any air. It contains only water. So now where are the hydrilla plants? They are in the funnel. Now the funnel and the test tube, everything is in the water inside the beaker. So this is the setup which we made to observe the production of oxygen in presence of light. So now we have taken this setup into sunlight. If this setup is kept in sunlight, we observe small bubbles are evolving from these hydrilla plants, small bubbles. These bubbles are nothing but oxygen gas. And these bubbles, they are liberated into this test tube because the end of the funnel is inside the test tube. So there is no chance for the oxygen gas to escape out because here we kept inverted test tube. So the oxygen gas enters into the test tube. So at the top of the test tube, here the oxygen gas is collected. If you keep this setup for a long time, so say for some hours of time, four hours or five hours or one day or two day, sometimes you can keep it for three days. So what happens? you will be able to find large volume of oxygen gas collected inside the test tube. So large volume of oxygen gas that is produced by the hydrilla plant. And we also found that the production of oxygen, the process of photosynthesis takes place only in presence of sunlight. So this can be kept in light for three days. So large volume of oxygen is collected. So how do we know that the gas collected is oxygen? We know the property of oxygen. Oxygen, it burns or it flares up the fire. So, after collecting this oxygen, carefully if you close the end of the test tube with your thumb and if you carefully remove the test tube, so which is having oxygen gas here. Now, in this way with your thumb, you have closed it. If you bring an incense stick, agarbatti, and if you keep it inside the test tube, because of the oxygen, it flares up. So it gives some flames. Because oxygen flares up the fire. So we can understand that the gas collected inside the test tube is oxygen. So by this experiment, we can prove that oxygen is released in photosynthesis. And we can prove that, that it happens only in presence of light. So this is the importance of light in photosynthesis. Okay, now let us look at one more activity which helps us to prove that light is necessary for photosynthesis. So sunlight is also the another factor needed for the process of photosynthesis. How can we prove it? Here to prove that uh, we need some apparatus to do this activity. We need a potted plant and this potted plant it has to be destarched. We already discussed the process of destarching, how to destarch a plant, keeping in dark for some days. So now here we have selected a healthy potted plant which is uh, which its leaves are destarched. Now take a cardboard and make some cut design on it. You can make some cut design some ear shape or some kind of shape on this cardboard. So now take this cardboard and place it to one of the healthy leaves. Place it on the healthy leaf with the shape some kind of shape on it. So now fix this cardboard to the leaf with the help of some clips. You can use some uh, black paper or some kind of cardboard or some kind of uh, silver foil, any of the material, but you should take care that light should not fall on this area. So the area which is closing the leaf. 
only in the cut design area we are allowing the light to fall so that means if the leaf is fixed like this the light is falling in this cut design area the light is falling in this uncovered area but in the covered area there is no light so that is our main thing to keep this light screen so this setup is left in sunlight for few hours so what happens after that, we can remove this screen, we can remove the cut design, pluck off the leaf and test the leaf for the presence of starch. So this leaf is removed and we know how to test for the presence of starch. The leaf has to be decolored, then add a few drops of iodine solution. So what do we find there? So if this is the leaf. Do we get the dark blue color on the complete leaf? No. So we arranged some screen with a shape. So we find dark blue color in this shape. So this part is blocked. So here no color change. No color change in this part. Whereas in this part dark blue color and in this part dark blue color. So why there is no color change in this area? Because this area it was covered. That means we did not allow sunlight to reach this part. Only we allowed in this design part and this area. So these two areas are dark blue color. But whereas this area remains colorless. This shows that light is necessary for photosynthesis. So in absence of light there is no photosynthesis.